What is a big question that we haven't talked about so far that you have for our Tigers oh, heading into the 2024 season? What do you got for us? I have 60 thoughts in one mouth. Mr. Mr. Not an insider, Mr. <laughs> pessimistic himself. What you Miss, got? Yes. Yes. <laughs> pessimistic, pessimistically optimistic, uh, not a journalist. Yeah. I just want to yeah. let y'all know I'm not a journalist. I, I don't, yeah. I, I don't claim to be, uh, for all, uh, for all, you know, from waist down, I'm not wearing any pants right now. You have no clue. <laughs> right. I uh, know. No, I mean, it, you know, our female would, audience just went up a little bit. I think. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, they ran away. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> no, um, no, listen, I mean, I tell you this, I'm going to go a little more optimistic uh, for you. Everybody, don't, you're not having a heart attack. You're not having a stroke. I actually said that. Uh, I, I tell you someone I'd like to see have some redemption who has caught so much unneeded criticism, who has been put into an impossible situation. Uh, Trevor and Deshaun never dealt with this consistently never dealt with this type of criticism and it's Cade Klubnik I mean I don't know how many people has come out of the woodwork and filled a, a, a tube sock with soap bars of soap and started swinging away at that kid but for the very moment you mentioned that coach Sweeney who I have a lot of respect for and and rightfully so uh he's the guy who went out and hired a bunch of former players and they are the ones who didn't develop certain players. Mm -hmm. So, but those will be the very same people who will who will fill the tube socks full of bars of soap and go after a 20-year-old kid who played 6A Texas football, never lost a game, won three state championships, two of them as a starter, and then have the gall to say that he got lucky and he's overrated. I don't know what planet you live on, but we need to tell NASA someone finally made it to Mars because you're not <laughs> on Earth. Uh, I want to see Cade Klubnik have at least one. And I'm, and, and in fact, I was talking to one of my uh, one of my subscribers, longtime friends, Chase Henderson. Before I was on this, he asked me, you know, what what are you thinking? I said, I'll tell you this. I want Cade Klubnik to literally have one second longer than what he did in the pocket. That's all I'm asking for. Literally, folks, one Mississippi. That's all I want. Why? Because this young man has been put into an impossible situation with an offensive line that's questionable due to development, health, go ahead and make up whatever every other reason. We really don't know about the wide receiver situation because, good grief, they can't even finish a route good before he's having to run for his life. <laughs> And then he picks up and then he's picked up some poor habits. Why? Because he's got to make something happen. So I would love to see Cade Klubnik for himself actually get some redemption here. I would like to see him have a second longer to throw the football. I would like to see him take advantage of that. I would like to see him given some plays, even even if even if Riley says, listen. We're going to throw an extra guy back there to block for you. We're going to get you to throw it long just to keep the safeties honest. Just throw it out of bounds if there's nobody there. But we're going to keep them honest. You know, I would like to see that to where this guy actually gets to do something without trying to be Superman without all the tools around him or the development around him. So th that's what I would really like to see. Uh, I, I think the offensive line is going to slowly get better. Matt Luke is probably the best coach, one of the best coaches on staff, period. Oh, yeah. uh, but you still have to retrain those players, their reaction time. Because when you get to this level of football, you're reacting. And if you stop and you think, you just ended up in the injury tent, sir. So, I, you know, Matt Luke, we need to temper our expectations for him, not because he's not that great. It's because he's having to train these guys. He's having to retrain them. He's having to retrain their reaction, their technique, the way they approach everything. So, so I, you know, I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to seeing TJ Moore in Wesco, but I'm not putting the weight of the Clemson offense improvement on their shoulders. I think that's silly. I think that's irresponsible. Uh, you know, the, the best thing, again, give my boy one more second back there in the pocket, get creative with the play calling, and lean on Moffa. You can win nine games. Against nine of the 12 games that we play, you can win nine games with Moffa alone. Really. Go look at our schedule. You can do it. And he can punish it. Punish them. So the point is... Um, 
I just need you to show up for three games in my book. And if you can keep Georgia, like you said, well said, uh, make it look like we deserve to be there, and then go in and take care of NC State and say, hey, you've got a packed, you got a packed, you know, offense. But even by some of your own fans' admission, former players saying, you got some good players here and there on the on the NC State defense, but you're not that good. But that's their Achilles heel. And then Florida State, a lot of talent. Norvell can coach, but we know their quarterback, and it's just, it's just we know how to get to him. So for me, this season is manageable. But again, it goes back to our initial statements. Just show me. Uh, absolutely. And, you know, you know, on the Cade front, because you, you, you know, really just, I mean, you nailed it. Um, and just kind of his, it's, it's so important, you know, with this offense that, I mean, you, you said, you know, you can win a lot of games leaning on Moffa. Um, you know, I, I and mean, we shouldn't expect, you know, these two true freshman wide receivers to come in and, and bolster the responsibility of improving this offense. And, you know, I don't think you and I, I don't think you have to. Um, and I, I think this offense boils down to, you know, outside of Cade, I think it it boils down to these three players. I think Phil, uh, Phil Moffa, um, Antonio Williams and Jake Brenningstool. I think if these three if these three players are involved in your game plan every week. You should be able to win the majority of the games on the schedule. Maybe you don't you know, you know, Georgia. Sure. Long, long shot. Um you know, Florida State is going to be is tough. You know, just playing there is tough in in, in general. Um, but the rest of that schedule is very, very, very manageable, as you said. And I think if this offense features those three players outside of Cade, you should be able to win a lot of football games. And, and of course, staying healthy because you know, obviously, Antonio Williams had a you know he only played in five games essentially last year. Um, so I mean. I, I don't know if you guys agree with me, but correct me if I'm wrong. But th I feel like these, the, these, the, you know, those three players are the core of your offense, and they need, and that's where the offense needs to go. You know, be built around. And of course, you know, your offensive line needs to improve. So um, I don't know, y'all, y'all, let me know. <laughs> I, I don't know if I don't know if uh, uh, Tiger Paul Craven's done coughing, but I, I can give you I can give you a thought there. <laughs> yeah, go uh, ahead. Uh, my nose won't stop itching, so it's like a bad Saturday Night Live skit over here. It's like, what is what's going on with him? I uh, no, we the to me, run first, run first, run first. Let's start with the run. Let's start yeah. with the run. Let's not be so predictable, but run first, run first. And to me, I've looked at our schedule nine, maybe ten, counting NC State. You can run the football heavy and win the majority of those games. Um, when you get when you get to Georgia, do don't do like we did. And I know it's a different offensive coordinator and blah 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 blah. But don't do what we've done in the past, where we stop the run by stop running the football. Right? That's <laughs> dumb. They, yeah. I mean, I mean, there's high school coach. I live not too far from a high school. Uh, there's high school coaches who who knows not to do that. It's like you know, let's let's not if it's working, don't stop it. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, r run the football, but we have some speedsters and now we have some guys with speed with length and that that's the new guys use them, use them, use them. And you know what? It's so sad. We have a really good tight end room. We really have a good tight end room so and they're cool. just so overshadowed because of the, the talk of the offensive line and will the wide receivers get open? Hey, can they stay healthy? Uh, Cade and blah, 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 blah. But our, our tight ends, I really feel sorry for them a lot of times because even I'm guilty of just overlooking them. It's like, yeah, it's Brendan Still and Pat Henry and, and Sout and all that and Bettencourt or whatever his name is that we just recruited in. But we never talk about them. Those guys are really, really good and we need to utilize yeah. them. Absolutely. I mean, as talented as a room, I think, as you know, Clemson has had in a while. Um, I, I can't remember. And, you know, I, that kind of goes back to, you know, we don't we don't really talk about Kyle Richardson a ton because he's he was kind of a relative unknown. You know, just being a you know, he was the a coach, the coach over at a Northwestern High School. Um, but, you know, he, what he's done as a you know, as a recruiter, especially is has kind of gone, just flown under the radar. Um, and I, I think if you start to see the development with the younger guys, especially, I mean, yeah, you think you know what you have in burning school, but seeing the development of of Sapp and Olson Pat Henry. Uh, you still have Marcus Dixon and obviously Christian Benteker coming in. Like you have a really, really good core of um, 
tight ends for the you know for the you know near future and uh, beyond. So I, I'm I'm excited about that and hope that's a bigger feature of the offense and we can get those guys involved. Yeah, absolutely. Look, I I think uh, I think I'm done coughing at this point, <laughs> uh, at least for the time being. Uh, so I'll try to keep it together. Um, but anyways, um, you know, I think, Jordan, you made a lot of good points. And and I think the offensive coaching staff would be wise um, to focus the offense on the individuals that you talked about. And Antonio Williams, I've talked about it at, at length on this channel about how excited I am about Antonio Williams heading into the 2024 season. I think he's about to have an unbelievable season. I really do. Um, I truly believe that. I think he will be wide receiver number one uh, come season's end. I, I believe in Antonio Williams that much. Um, and some of the stuff that I've heard this offseason about him and how focused and how uh, locked in he has been from a preparation of his body to um, how he's approaching the, the game on the field is very encouraging. Um, and you guys mentioned the tight end position. Look, Clemson cannot go another season underutilizing the tight end position. That might be the best room on our entire team. And that's saying a lot because we've got some good position groups on this team. But that tight end group, top to bottom, is absolutely insane. And we just added Christian Benteker. I mean, the dude's out of this world. He's probably going to end up being quite possibly the best tight end we've ever signed at Clemson. And he's a true freshman. But he looks like he can play in the NFL today. Um, that's where he's at from a physical standpoint, right? Um, and then you got a Jake Benningstool. We have to utilize Jake Benningstool and make defenses pay for not being able to cover a guy of that size with that athleticism. I, I think about that Miami game. That it, oh man, he. I I, I would have been if I was Jake Benningstool. I, I I know he said he's flirted with the portal, uh, especially this off season. Man, I that that game would have had me livid. You know, the, the 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 performance that he had. How many he had like six catches for like 150 yards and like two touchdowns. Like the yeah. best tight end performance um mm -hmm. that Clemson's like ever had. Like it, yeah. it and you lose that game because of the things we've already talked about. So I mean yeah. Yeah. um and 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 Phil Moffa. I mean he's he's a workhorse. Go go back and you know, if 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 you can't remember, go back and just watch the Notre Dame game and think about the narrative of Clemson heading into that game. We were in a bad place. And I don't even remember what our predictions were heading into that week, Jordan. But uh, if I did pick Clemson to beat Notre Dame, it wasn't a confident pick. Uh, I know I didn't. I know I picked a loss. I think we both picked a loss uh, that all, week. All three of us did, yeah. There, there, there were no reasons to – think that Clemson was going to go in there and, and, and beat Notre Dame. Um, and then we completely flipped the script and out physical a team and showed that we had the ability to do it. Um, and that starts with a guy in Phil Moffat, and you have to use him early and often um, and allow him to take pressure off of a guy like Kate Klubnick. Uh, you can't have Kate Klubnick go out there and play hero ball. You can't. It's going to end in disaster. Um, don't do it. Let Kate Klubnick play within the – the confines of the Garrett Riley offense, make the proper reads, throw the ball away when it needs to be thrown away, use his athleticism and his legs when he needs to, uh, and then turn around and hand the ball off to Phil Moffa. Because guess what? Four quarters of tackling Phil Moffa, defenses don't want to see it. Yeah. They don't want to see it. Oh, and by the way, you got Keith Adams Jr. sitting there waiting on the sideline to give him a breather. And that dude ain't no easier to tackle either. And then yeah. you got a guy, oh, by the way, you got Jay Haynes over there. They can actually absolutely run you off the field with his speed and athleticism, especially gets out in space. Uh, fun question from Larry. This will be the last one. We're already hitting the two and a half hour, hour mark. Um, uh, he says, if you had three wishes to improve our football team, players and position coaches going into the season, what would you change, if any? Can I use t uh, multiple wishes on one? <laughs> on one? Um, no, but um, that's a really good question. I – I think quarterback, I think the improvement at quarterback is paramount first and foremost. So, I mean, I, I'm using at least one wish on, on Cade. Yeah. Um, then I think it's the next logical conclusion is offensive line. I, 
and then like what do you I, I think the third wish is where I'm I don't know where to e exactly put it because I if I, would, if I was doing your third wish I would say health yeah. um, because I'm with you I think that's from a health standpoint Clemson that's been a big part of our stumbles the past three seasons not all of them there's there's a lot of reasons and we outlined them pretty well in the show i think for the most part but health is so huge man especially along that offensive line i think we got some really talented guys that are going to run out there first but if they can't stay healthy it's going to be a long season again regardless uh same thing at the wide receiver position same thing at the cornerback position um, we're not real deep at the edge position either. Uh, so health for this team, I think is going to be really important. Um, because depth, I think can become an issue for this Clemson team quickly. Uh, yeah. if there starts being too much attrition, uh, especially at those positions I mentioned. So I would definitely go health with that third one. I, I think, I, I think I'm going to agree. Uh, Cause I, I, I do think, you know, some some Clemson fans would say receiver, but I I've, I'm kind of banking on, you know, you get improved play from Cade and and the offensive line. I think the receiver play will be there. I mean, you yeah. I've I've been vocal about how I feel about this room. I, I mean, I think it's really I think it's going to prove itself to be really good. But um, so I, I'm going to I'm going to bank on my my projection on on that one and and save that that final wish for just stay healthy. Because that yeah. ultimately that's that's going to improve the wide receiver room anyway. Because that's that's been their bugaboo, um, yep. their biggest one at least. So um, you know maybe like if I did pick one, I if I did pick something from the, if I did pick the receivers, I would specify blocking. I just I, I want to see good blocking. blocking. Yeah, I think, that, blocking. yeah. I, I think that would be a good choice. But but I think health is the right decision because I. I think they'll be better um, from a blocking standpoint, and just naturally from another year of doing it, I guess. Um, and hopefully that, and and that, and hopefully that is enough to to see the improvement uh, that uh, that Tyler Grisham is, is making, and maybe it'll take some heat off of him from the fans. So, um, yeah, I think I'm I think I'm with you. 